you know, when politicians hold meetings in remote parts of the country, it is not easy to get the whole story. Not many journalists will manage to make it to that political function. Many media outlets will opt to use that politicians, press people, yeah, to get information and photographs, or video clips of what really happened. I believe this is why Deputy President William Samoy Ruto, early this week, chose West Pocot as the place where he would start promoting a party called UDA. Ay, 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 ay. It is called testing the waters. Yeah, that is when a politician wants to do something very delicate. And that precisely, a delicate operation, is what is going to be the focus of our show today. The very delicate, unprecedented, it has never been done before, operation of a deputy president of the Republic of Kenya leaving the political party, the political ticket, which gave him that seat. You know the huge advantage of having a meeting in a remote area of Kenya is that Kikiumana, you can deny. You can say, no, I didn't say that, I didn't do that. Show me the evidence. Now, why is this operation so delicate? I think let's start there. Number one, and the most obvious, the deputy president cannot remain deputy president. And yet, he is no longer in jubilee. That cannot happen. Number two, by leaving jubilee, the deputy president gives his opponents an edge, a huge advantage. Why? Because the minute he leaves together with the supporters, the Jubilee party is no longer split down the middle. The minute he leaves, the Jubilee party becomes united once again. Or to quote the very strong words used in the local press, the Jubilee Party will no longer be described as damaged and badly bleeding. In other words, the Deputy President needs an elaborate exit strategy to leave Jubilee and to start building, openly building, UDA. No longer doing it secretly, behind the scenes. But what made me really sit up and pay attention was the move by the Deputy President to announce to the world, to announce officially, that he has given up on Jubilee and he is leaving. And he did this during an interview with KTN, uh, the television network. Now, in case you didn't know it, it is not the press that chooses when to interview a top politician like the deputy president. They don't wake up one morning and say, hey, today we don't have anything. Let's talk to the deputy president. And it happens that day. No. Actually, it's the other way around. The deputy president decides there's a bombshell I want to release to the press today. And he picks up the phone, talks to his press people, and tells them, I want to be on KTN today. So where am I going with this one? I'll tell you. This is all about timing. The deputy president has decided that it is time to start the delicate operation of abandoning, leaving behind Jubilee Party. 
and take careful note of the chain of events. A kicks off the week in West Pocot, promoting his UDA party. And he ends the week by appearing on national television and telling us he's fed up, he has given up on the Jubilee party. Now, prepare yourself for the real bombshell on our show today. And here it is. It is in answer to the question, when exactly will the deputy president finally leave Jubilee? What is he waiting for? Answer, he will leave Jubilee when it is as crippled, damaged, destroyed as it can possibly be. Because remember, this is competitive national politics. The minute the deputy president steps outside the party, the Jubilee party becomes his main rival, his competitor. And the stakes are very high because we are talking about the presidency of the Republic of Kenya 2022, which is just a handful of months away. Those general elections are just a handful of months away. Time always flies. 13 months and a handful of days is nothing. Bottom line, this is the phase in the deputy president's delicate operation of living jubilee where he must weaken and if possible destroy jubilee before he leaves you know there's something very interesting the deputy president said during his interview with ktn let me just quote the legacy of this regime, that is Jubilee, will be largely on what we have achieved in rail, roads, education, robust electricity connection. By the way, the deputy president really loves that English word, robust. <laughs> but here is the real kick. And those are things that we rolled in the first term. What? Then he goes on to use some very delicate words, but we know exactly what he's saying. Yeah. When he says the success of the Big Four agenda is debatable. <laughs> now, this is very interesting. He does not say the president's Big Four agenda has failed. He says its success is debatable. <laughs> of course, the big four came yeah, after the fallout between the president and his deputy. And he says this after emphasizing that the legacy of this regime will be the achievements yeah, in the early years of this regime when he was firmly in jubilee, when he was firmly in control, and some people even say he was actually the core president, uh, including this blogger. Now, what Ruto is doing is smart politics. And who said politics is clean? For instance, one of the areas the deputy president mentioned was rail. And of course, he was talking about the SGR. And let me take the opportunity of borrowing some English words from the Deputy President to describe the SGR. The success of the SGR project, huge, massive project in Kenya, is debatable. <laughs> and having said that, the truth of the matter, the facts, are that the SGR was the baby of the Grand Coalition Government. Mwai Kibaki 
and the Grand Coalition Government. Jubilee simply came in, took the Grand Coalition baby, and ran with it. But sadly, yeah, the truth is, this legacy of the Jubilee regime which I agree is the one that it will be most remembered for, also came with a lot of pain because it has greatly affected negatively the economy of Mombasa yeah, and the entire chunk of Kenya on Mombasa Road from Mombasa to Nairobi where there was a thriving economy that depended on the trucks ferrying goods from Mombasa to Nairobi and beyond. The lives of many Kenyans in this area have become more miserable. People lost jobs. Establishments were shut down yeah, because there are not that many trucks traveling from Mombasa to Nairobi. Now, don't get me wrong, the advantages, because with less traffic on that road, one of the most dangerous roads in our country, fatal road accidents have reduced. But this is politics. That is not what people remember. You can be sure people remember the pain it caused. Yeah. In financial terms to individuals affected yeah, by losing jobs losing revenue etc etc the deputy president also mentioned education now 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 <laughs> let me put it this way the idea was good the execution was shoddy and then something called COVID came along. Yeah, not Jubilee's fault, admittedly. But it came along and sealed the fate of the education legacy as far as this Jubilee regime, outgoing Jubilee regime, is concerned. And so, to use delicate language once again, the issue of having this Jubilee administration having a legacy is very debatable. <laughs> Which means, for our purposes today, that when the deputy president starts campaigning for the presidency and he refers to the legacy of the first term of the Jubilee administration, he is going to find himself suddenly in a lot of trouble. Because if he's campaigning anywhere in the coastal region, SGR is a four-letter word as far as those people are concerned. And if you're a parent or you've talked to parents who have children in school recently, local schools, not the ones who take their children to schools outside the country, you will know that if he mentions a legacy of education anywhere in Kenya and link it to the Jubilee first term, <laughs> people could walk out of that campaign meeting. Oh, yes. Bottom line, even as the deputy president engages in the delicate operation of leaving Jubilee, there is a much more delicate operation ahead for him. And that is the one of campaigning for the presidency of Kenya. It will be very delicate because the truth is, whether you love the deputy president or not, he has very little to show Kenyans, indeed nothing, yeah, as far as his track record of improving the lives of Kenyans is concerned. And that is a fact but this is politics and people with much worse track records have been elected much worse than the deputy presidents 
So we shall just have to wait and see. Although it is the prayer of many Kenyans, yeah, that Kenyan voters will finally wake up. Now, for those who want more information, more classified information on the deputy president, if I can put it like that, I would highly recommend my weekly intelligence briefings. Kindly just listen in to this recording I made earlier to learn more. While I try my very best to give you real value on this public channel and to give you all the valuable information I can, the truth is there's some information that is way too sensitive to share on this public channel. That information usually ends up in my weekly intelligence briefings, which is usually Moto Kamapasi. Just to give you a few examples, what really happened to former President of Tanzania, Dr. John Pombe Magfuli? Is it true that he passed on at a Nairobi hospital? Actually, the Magfuli inside story is nothing short of mind boggling. Most people who have taken in my WIB number 52, which contains this information, have been left breathless. Even the most hardened cynics have been left billawards, if I can put it in the Kenyan way. Another example of a WIB that I published recently. There is a secret that those who are close to Raila Odinga have guarded and continue to guard with everything they have. Why is this particular secret so sensitive? And what is it anyway? It is contained in one of my WABs. In fact, a recent one. And there's much more, including Things you'd never imagine that are happening in the corridors of power that neatly explain what we see unfolding in the public domain. Bottom line, you will never look at Kenyan politics in the same way again after you become a WIB subscriber. Indeed, it is true to say that in most instances, the truth is stranger than fiction and sometimes much more difficult to believe than fiction but it remains the naked truth and now you have a golden opportunity of becoming a weekly intelligence briefing subscriber on a monthly basis which will automatically give you access to every single WIB ever produced. Oh yes, I will send you all the WIBs immediately you become a subscriber. And to become a monthly subscriber, all you need is $9.95 only or Kenya shillings 900 and 95 only simply send a blank email to the email address you see on your screens right now and you'll get an automated response by email instantly within seconds with full payment instructions and what you need to do the same full payment instructions are also included in the description area below this video on YouTube I strongly recommend that you go for it because this offer will not last for much longer. I really look forward to seeing you on the other side as a WIB subscriber. Thanks so much for your support. It means a lot to me.
And I'm saying that very sincerely from the bottom of my heart. I look forward to seeing you on the other side as a WIB subscriber. Until next time, this is Chris Komekoja.